roller operations compact the asphalt mat into smooth, dense pavement. Each asphalt mixture behaves differently. The appropriate number and types of rollers, number of passes, target mixture temperatures, and roller settings required for proper compaction will vary depending on the specific mix. If a mix is not compacted correctly, it can become damaged or fail to meet required specifications. Compact the mat while it's within the ideal temperature range, known as the rolling zone. This zone is generally divided into three phases, breakdown, intermediate, and finish rolling. Breakdown rolling is the initial pass over a freshly placed mat to set it in place. This phase typically uses vibratory steel drum rollers to achieve optimal density. When we first start with the breakdown roller, we look for the breakover. He will make a pass, our QC guy will test it. He'll make him another pass, he'll test it. He'll make him another pass, he'll test it. And the, as the density keeps coming up, what we're looking for is what we call the breakover. So we take it as high as it'll go, and then all of a sudden it drops back down. That, we know that's the breaking point there, so then we create that as our breakdown pattern. Next, intermediate rolling further densifies the mixture before it cools to the cessation temperature. Pneumatic tire rollers generally work best in this phase, though sometimes vibratory or oscillatory rollers are used. The last step, finish rolling, removes roller marks but does not further increase the pavement density. The pavement must still be slightly warm during finish rolling. A static steel wheel roller or a vibratory steel drum roller in static mode is used in this phase. During roller operations, the operator controls several compaction variables, such as roller speed, number of passes, and rolling pattern. The operator should work with the QC technician to optimize the roller pattern to achieve the desired density as conditions change during paving. The faster a roller passes over a spot, the less time the weight of the roller dwells on that spot. Less compactive force is applied to the mix and density gained per pass decreases. The target roller speed is the slowest pace that keeps up with the paving train, typically no more than a walking pace. Slower speeds allow the mat to cool too much before compaction, and higher speeds don't apply enough compactive force. Both can result in inadequate compaction. Once established, roller speed should not change unless density requirements are not being met. The other item the operator can easily control is the number of times a roller passes over a pavement section. Each point on a mat requires a certain number of passes to achieve the desired density, and all points on the mat should receive the same number of passes to provide a consistent pavement. Larger operations may have multiple rollers operating in complex patterns. Each roller has a specific amount of patterns to roll, and they have to be consistent. They have to be diligent. That is how we get that optimum compaction. If, if one gets off and doesn't complete its complete pattern, it could throw everything off, and we would lose our density. And when we core and we send it into the lab, we fail. The roller operator has some control over the mat temperature during compaction. Rolling directly behind the paver keeps the mat in the rolling zone longer, which helps achieve target density faster. However, some mixes are tender and may shift or crack if rolled too hot during breakdown. Roller operators can delay rolling slightly, but compaction must still be completed before the mat cools to the cessation temperature. This may require additional rollers. Here are some best practices to keep in mind. Gradually start and stop the roller otherwise it will tear the fresh mat. Stop steel drum rollers at an angle or on an adjacent pavement to prevent forming a bump. Turning the roller while stopping will rip the mat. Turn off compaction enhancers on vibratory and oscillatory rollers when the machine stops and do not re-engage them until the roller is moving. The rolling is the final product. It'll make it or break it. You could have the most beautiful paving in the world uh, the best asphalt in the world, but if it's not rolled correctly and you don't get that optimum density like you're supposed to, you're going to tear it back out. 